It's here. For nostalgic purposes, the Oklahoma Nebraska game is here, and I would like to give my prediction on it with you boys and girls out there in sporting land. This game used to be one of historical significance. It's not so much now because of conference realignment and whatnot. But let's go get some nostalgia. Let's talk about it. The home of the common Joe and the common Sally in the know, even more so than all those media talking. Well, well, well here we go again. Once again, this is the OCF, the Outlaw of College Football, can also be found on Facebook under Jesse Paul Clark. That's spelled J-E-S-S-E without an I. And I'm on Twitter at OCF Productions. Now, today, class, we're going to come here and talk about a rivalry that used to hold so much significance, not just regionally, not just within that conference, but within the nation. This game was the game that coined the phrase, the game of the century. If you go back, I think it was 1971, um, epic game, epic historical game. It was called the game of the century. I think both teams were one and two at the time, and I think it ended up 35 to 31. Fast forward a little bit, you got great coaching rivalries that took place from Bob Devaney against Chuck Fairbanks for a time, and then Bob Devaney versus Barry Switzer. Um, then you had Barry Switzer versus Tom Osborne for a number of years. For a while there, Barry Switzer had Tom, Tom Osborne's number somewhat. But then Tom Osborne came around and uh, – Finally won his first national championship against uh, Bobby Bowden, of all people, I think. And Oklahoma had some down years in the 90s. Nebraska took advantage of that for a little while, won a few national championships, and you get into the 2000s and reverts back to Bob Stoops um, going up against a number of Nebraska coaches. Uh, I think the beginning of the struggles for Nebraska began a lot of people want to say they shouldn't have got rid of Bo Pelini, but I think it goes a, a, a little further back than that. When Frank Solich came in and um, succeeded uh, Tom Osborne, and he had a one or two subpar seasons, I think they were like seven and six or six and six one year. And the Nebraska people coming fresh off of winning two out of three national championships were a little spoiled. As a lot of fan bases have been in the past, Alabama and Bear Bryant comes to mind. And they forced him out, which was a big mistake in my opinion, because now Frank Solich has a football field named after him with the Ohio Bobcats. He went on to coach for the Ohio Bobcats for a very long time and had a very successful career there. I think Frank, uh, Frank Solich had stayed around. If they'd been a little more patient, then Nebraska may have not have fell off the map quite as much when they made that transition to the Big Ten. I think, I think Frank Solich would have been a better coach to handle that situation that came a little bit after his dismissal. And so we fast forward to now, and you have the Nebraska rivalry with Oklahoma, which was put on hold for a little while when you had the transitioning of them going to the Big Ten. They didn't play for a little while. Well, they renewed the rivalry last year, and everybody thought Oklahoma was going to blow them out, but it ended up being a pretty close game. I think it was 23-16, which goes hand-in-hand hand with why this rivalry is so great. Is When you think another team's down, sometimes they bow up for this game. Now, there have been instances in the past where there have been horrendous blowouts on both sides of the ball. But now, we fast forward to now, as I said, and this week we have Nebraska – and Oklahoma once again. It just feels so odd, and you get a little sad and nostalgic sometimes because I know things have got to change, but sometimes things don't have to change. And for people to continue to say that, oh, things have got to change, yeah, they do, but not all the time. This rivalry is one of those rivalries that should never went away, just like Texas and Texas a and I don't think Nebraska and Oklahoma wanted the rivalry to go away, unlike the Texas-Texas A&M thing. A&M wanted to get away from Texas, uh, so they did. <laughs> and now we have this game this week. Nebraska has fallen on hard times once again. Oklahoma 
is starting a new era themselves. So it's quite a unique situation. You have a coaching situation at Nebraska that's just uh, just a cluster. <laughs> and then you have Oklahoma situation, which is a brand new situation as well with Brent Venables still being a little green and cutting his teeth. Luckily, he had a couple of easy games to start himself off, which I think was uh, a blessing in disguise, as I discussed in another video. So what's going to happen? Is Nebraska going to finally right the ship this week? Are they going to bow up? Are they are their players going to find some magic and get behind Mickey Joseph, who used to be a quarterback at Nebraska, ironically, uh, before Scott Frost, I think. It's funny they went from one Nebraska former quarterback to another former Nebraska quarterback. <laughs> There's so many um, caveats to this game. As you know, Oklahoma – like I said, you really can't tell how great they are quite yet because of the schedule they played. But they look really good against UTEP. They did what they were supposed to do. Um, at Kent, when they played Kent State now, a little bit different story. They did struggle in the first half of that game. It was 7-3 to three at halftime. Oklahoma came on the second half and finished it up the way they needed to finish it up. They probably should have beat them a little bit more, but they didn't. And they did hold them to three points, so that was a good – um, thing that you could take from you. I mean, you can't ask for much more than that, no matter who you play, right? Unless you shut them out. So, it's a hard game for me to call because I'm back and forth on this thing because you could think that, you know, hey, because this is college football and I've seen this movie play out a thousand times where they bring in a new coach like this from the staff, the players rally behind him, get fired up and pull off a, an emotional upset victory over a Big name school that might be a rival of theirs. And I've seen on the flip side as well, where it's just going to take a few bad plays to shake that emotion, that initial emotion that Nebraska and their players are going to have coming out of that tunnel in Lincoln's Memorial Stadium in Nebraska can be shaken quite easily if Oklahoma gets off to a fast start. And I think that's what Oklahoma needs. They need to get off to a fast start like they did against UTEP. I'm not saying you got to score 21 points, but if you can get up by double digits early, 10 to nothing, something like that, that'll start having doubts creep in. Then if you, as you move on in the second quarter, if you can probably put another score on the board, like maybe a touchdown, make it 17 to nothing, at that point I think Nebraska would probably roll over and you'd have one of those blowout situations. Now the game's a little close at first. And Nebraska believes that they can stay in it and win it, then you might have some issues for Oklahoma because they too are still new and gathering their confidence. A few bad plays here and there against a team that is supposed to be a bigger name school and a, an old, long, begone rival. And Oklahoma had, could have some uh, thoughts creeping in and some, some self doubt. But the way I see it is, I think Oklahoma's going to try to get up. I think they're going to score early, uh, get up maybe 10 points, 14 points. Nebraska may claw back a little bit in the second quarter and make it a game into the middle part of the third, early part of the fourth. And uh, I'd say around the nine, 10 minute mark of the fourth quarter, maybe Oklahoma get some separation, a few big plays. Nebraska, at that point, who's used to losing? at this point by losing to Georgia Southern and Northwestern will finally succumb to Oklahoma and Oklahoma will win this game in the end I think the final score now the thing about Nebraska is now they do have an offense so Oklahoma's defense is finally going to be tested somewhat now I know UTEP's quarterback they've been saying he's an NFL prototype quarterback and a lot of scouts are looking at him and y'all y'all held him to 13 points but the rest of his team Maybe be not as quite as good as Nebraska. I know there's going to be people coming here and taking shots in Nebraska. They look, they lost to Georgia Southern Northwestern. They're not as good as UTEP. I kind of doubt that. I think the confidence level is not as good as most teams because it's shot to hell because of the situation that they've been going through losing all these close games. So the offense may be their saving grace. They might try to outscore Oklahoma. If that's the case, then Oklahoma may be in trouble. But in the end, I think Oklahoma pulls away. 
And I'm going to say Oklahoma 34 and Nebraska 23. You guys and gals tell me what you think. I need to know your prediction. Drop in the comment section, especially all you Oklahoma and Nebraska fans out there who have a better feel for this rivalry than I do. Drop in the comment section. Also, there's a heart down here at the bottom. It says thanks. Click on that and drop a few dollars in the coffers. Help me get off this YouTube teat. And as always, KMCA to all the other teams. Class is now officially dismissed.